now coming to glycolysis pathway it starts from glucose end with the pyruvate right we already covered this by now so glucose is converted to glucose 6 phosphate by hexose or by hexokinase or by glucokinase so there are two enzymes that can convert this glucose to glucose 6 phosphate atp is consumed in this process and which gives a adp plus a phosphate then we have glucose 6 phosphate converted to fructose 6 phosphate now here glucose is converted to fructose so we have isomerase enzyme since glucose and fructose are isomerase so phospho gluco isomerase enzyme then this fructose 6 phosphate to fructose 16 biphosphate guys this is a rate limiting step the phospho fructo kinase 1 since it is adding to the first uh, unit that is why phospho fructose kinase 1 it is the rate most important rate limiting enzyme of glycolysis so conversion of fructose 6 phosphate to fructose 16 biphosphate earlier uh, fructose phosphate is connected to the sixth unit on the fructose here we have two units of phosphate that are connected first and the sixth now fructose 16 biphosphate which is a six carbon compound it is converted into two three carbon compound one three carbon compound is dehydroxy acetone phosphate which is dhab and another one so this conversion of fatty acid to glucose can be via this dhap which we already covered right or it can be glycerol glyceraldehyde 3 phosphate which is g3p so this is also three carbon compound now both of these carbon the glyceraldehyde 3 phosphate will also give rise to pyruvate in the end as a product and dhap which is dehydroxy acetone phosphate will also give one pyruvate in the end so end result we will have one molecule of glucose converting into two molecule of pyruvate into in the end of the glycolysis so now both of these the steps are going to remain since they are isomerase then we have triose phosphate dehydrogenase which will convert nad into nadh so which is going to again consume energy and it will convert into 13 biphosphoglycerate now from here we have 3 phosphoglycerate one phosphate is removed here and you can see adp plus the phosphate which is removed converted to 2 atp now we are getting energy at this point of uh, reaction and we have 3 phosphoglycerate one phosphate is removed then from third carbon this phosphate is exchanged to two carbon so it is 2 phosphoglycerate and since there is the enzyme is mutase it is changing the position of the phosphate group so phosphoglyceromutase then we have enol group added to this so 2 phosphoglycerate when enol is added it will convert into phosphoenol pyruvate that is in presence of enolase it will give to pyruvate and here one more phosphate is removed so phospho phosphoenol pyruvate you can see there is a phosphate group in this and this phosphate group is again taken up by adp and gives rise to atp energy and it converted to pyruvate and here phosphate is removed now this is the glycolysis cycle the important point that you need to remember is one is the rate limiting step uh, there are three substrate level phosphorylation or we can say there are three rate limiting enzyme but the most important being phosphofructokinase so there is conversion of fructose 6 phosphate to fructose 16 biphosphate in the presence of phosphofructokinase 1 which is also known as pfk phosphofructokinase 1 now also you need to remember one more thing here there is a aldolase enzyme and uh, they can ask you question like substrate for aldolase enzyme substrate for aldolase enzyme is going to be fructose 16 biphosphate and it will give product two products it will give products such as glyceraldehyde 3 phosphate and dhap which is dehydroxy acetone phosphate so they can ask you Uh, they have asked you they have asked in the question the substrate for aldolase it is fructose 16 biphosphate the most important question that has been asked from this glycolysis is enolase enzyme fluoride inhibits the enzyme enolase and that has been a, a question that has been asked previously so the regulatory enzyme or irreversible enzyme i told you there are three regulatory enzyme one is heck all the kinases you need to remember so we have hexokinase or you can use glucokinase 
one is this kinase another kinase is our main rate limiting enzyme which is phosphofructokinase one which is most important again it is a kinase and the third kinase is pyruvate kinase which is the last enzyme guys which converts phosphoenol pyruvate to pyruvate so it is pyruvate kinase so we have three regulatory enzyme these are irreversible enzymes so concerning glycolysis the regulatory reaction are the rate controlling reaction and they are also known as the irreversible reactions so glucokinase guys this enzyme has got a higher km value than the normal blood sugar so we have three kinases phosphofructokinase which is most important and hexokinase or pyruvate kinase Glucokinase, I told you, it has a higher KM value and it is found in the liver. So, postprandial after a meal utilization of glucose is by a, via the enzyme glucokinase. Enzyme of the glycolysis are present in cytoplasm. I told you all the catalytic reaction occurs in mitochondria and all the anabolic reaction occurs in cytoplasm. But here in the cytoplasm, we have two exceptions. One is glycolysis and another is glyco glycogenolysis. So glycolysis again occurs in cytoplasm and the breakdown of the glycogen also occurs in the cytoplasm. Apart from that, all the anabolic reactions occur in cytoplasm and all the catabolic reactions occur in the mitochondria and there are three reactions which occur in both mitochondria and the cytoplasm. So the rate limiting step of glycolysis is fructose 6-phosphate get converted to fructose 1,6-biphosphate. And this is the rate limiting enzyme which is phosphofructokinase 1. And here we are getting a phosphate from breakdown of the ATP. So ATP is broken down to ADP and one phosphate is released and this phosphate is attached to the first unit. right? Now this reaction is inhibited by. This reaction is inhibited if you give more of ATP. So there is going to be high energy state of the body and this is going to inhibit this. Uh, now, if we have ATP or if we have substrate, it is going to inhibit this rate limiting step or it is stimulated by either ADP or AMP or it is also stimulated by fructose 2,6-biphosphate when there is low energy state in the body. The reaction catalyzed by this phosphofructokinase, it is the rate limiting reaction of the glycolysis pathway. Now coming to energetics of the glycolysis, we already covered glucose is broken down into 2 pyruvate. We utilize 3 ATP, uh, sorry, we utilize 2 ATP, one at the first step and one at the third step. Now if you recall the glycolysis again, so we use, we utilize ATP at the first step you can see we utilize and at the third step. So minus ATP here, minus ATP here. Now, we also form ATP. Here you can see, we form 2 ATP here, plus 2 ATP, plus uh, 2 ATP. At the 7th step you can see, and at the 4th step also, we have, uh, sorry, at the 10th step, last one, we also form 2 ATP. You can see, because this is, Pyruvate is converted from glyceraldehyde 3-phosphate as well as pyruvate is uh, formed from DHAP. So we have two ATPs on both of the ends. So we are getting four ATP and we are using or consuming two ATPs. Apart from that, we also have NAD which is converted to NADH. When this NADH to NADH, we have two, remember, when this goes to ETC, one NADH will form 2.5 ATP. It will give us 2.5 ATP. Now here we have 2 NADH into 2. So we will, give, we will get 5 ATP. So the ATP which we are getting are 5 plus 2 plus 2. Which is we are getting guys. We are getting minus 2. We are using 2 ATPs at the step number one and step number three so enzyme is hexokinase at step number one or step number three is phosphofructokinase then plus four atp we are uh, generating four atp two atp at the step number seven and two atp at the step number ten which is pyruvate kinase 
we are getting two NADH. It goes to ETC cycle and we get 5 ATP out of that. So one molecule of glucose is converted to two molecules of pyruvate and the ATP which we get is 5 plus 4 which is 9 minus we are using two ATPs here. So minus we do two ATPs then the total uh, ATP generated from the glycolysis cycle is 7 ATP. Now these 7 ATP are in the aerobic condition. When I say anaerobic condition which is in the absence of oxygen what happens? Pyruvate is not the product. The product here is lactate which is the step 11. Now till now in the aerobic condition we have covered the 10 steps of glycolysis. Here in absence of oxygen we have one more step pyruvate is broken down into lactate. So this is the step 11 of the glycolysis cycle. Pyruvate is converted to 2 lactate in presence of lactate dehydrogenase enzyme. Lactate dehydrogenase enzyme and here the 2 NAD was converting to 2 NADH which was giving us 5 ATPs. What happens These this NADH is consumed at step number 11. And 2 NADH is converted to 2 NAD. These NAD are reused here. So what happens? These 5 ATP are not generated in anaerobic condition. So in anaerobic condition we have minus 2 ATP which was occurring at step number 1 and step number 3. And plus 4 ATP which were generated at step number 7 and step number 10 so we get plus 4 minus 2 that is equal to only 2 ATP now the 5 ATP which we are getting from NADH earlier in the aerobic we are not getting in the anaerobic because step 11 uses this NADH. So total ATP generated in the anaerobic condition is only 2 ATP. No ATP is formed from NADH as seen in the aerobic glycolysis. The purpose of this step 11 that is conversion of pyruvate to lactate is regenerate the NAD which gain, which again can be reused in the glycolysis pathway. So in anaerobic glycolysis, the end product we are getting is 2 NAD plus 2 ATP. But when I say we have a gain of how many ATP? Only 2 ATP. We have a gain of only 2 ATP. Or I can say net ATP is also 2 ATPs. NAD is 0.